I suppose there's going to be a lot more XRP getting burned if people are actually, actually as excited for this, this XAH, Zahal Network, as they lead me to believe. Because a lot of people have told me about the Zahal Network. And, and like, yeah, we've reported on this. We've covered it where you burn. Listen, that's the thing that gets me. You have to burn your XRP in order to receive XAH tokens. No, not for me. For me, no, no, that's not going to happen. No, we're so close to the ending of that SEC case. We're in the remedies phase, everything. No, we have all these banks set up. No, I'm not I'm not going to play with the bank coins. That's not going to happen. I just, I only speak for myself. All right, you do what you want to do. But there's no way I'm playing with XRP. Not going to happen. I didn't come this far to only come this far. But like I said, I, in the comment sections, a lot of people have been enthusiastic about the Zahal, Zahal network. So, I guess some way that they're, they're, I don't know if they're taking it from their old bags of XRP or they're just buying new XRP and burning it to get Zahal. I don't know how that's going, but they have this update coming out. So that's what this article is about. This update, this XAH teleport, which is supposed to bring more interoperability to the XRPL. So now what's going to be able to happen is the XAH will be able to flow over into the XRPL and XRP will be able to flow from the XRPL. That's the XRP. XRP will be able to flow from the XRPL over to the XAH chain or however you want to put that seamlessly. So hence more interoperability. But of course, once again, in order to use that, you got to burn XRP. So listen, yeah, sure. There's a bright side to that. If people I, I want to see how much people are going to actually use this. If people burn a ton of XRP, that obviously brings down that circulating supply. There's a heck of a lot of XRP because we know what it was meant for. You know, global, whether it's a global reserve currency and people could debate about that, sure. Or the banks all use it and keep it in closed ecosystems. I think that's a high possibility in the future, of course. Um, or any of the the real uh, uses that we know XRP XRP is set up for. Um, you know that's why it has such a large a large supply. It has to be enough for it to go around, apparently, right? But um, with all, if we get an increase in transactions, let's say this case ends. All of a sudden, it starts flying. That's a definite possibility. It's not like when XRP got its clarity. See, and this is what I was I was trying. If you go back and watch those videos from last year, I was trying to explain. Once XRP got its clarity, it still wouldn't matter because for someone like me who's looking for that institutional use, there was still going to be a court battle. That's what I was trying to convey in those videos. Um, so XRP is just standing alone waiting for its parent whoever's building on the XRPL, mostly Ripple, to take his hand and walk it into that promised land. That's really what it was. So it's just been sitting around waiting, but it hasn't been able to serve its purpose. But when Ripple is freed up and the cuffs are off, the manacles are off, and they're able to be unleashed, this is why they've stayed firm in the USA. They're getting ready. They're probably laughing right now, laughing right now. Because they know the setup that they have and the possibilities. And it's a high possibility that they're going to be successful with establish, establishing XRP within the United States. Once they're in the clear, listen, take Bitcoin, and I'm going to say this. Yeah, I'm going to be bold and say this. Take Bitcoin as an indicator of how easy it is once you have the okay, once you have the go ahead from these big businesses, how easy it is for everybody to start accepting that particular crypto once it has the OK. So you have Bitcoin with the OK right now. You have Ethereum sort of. Ethereum is looking at a little bit of a little bit of trouble uh, in the future if things continue to go this way with certain uh, certain things. I'll just say that. I'll just say I'll leave it at that. Uh, no shots at Ethereum. I hope Ethereum continues to make a lot of money for a lot of people. But XRP will have the most clarity ever. Ever. And so I don't see why it wouldn't get the go ahead. Once this case is over, it gets the go ahead. It gets the green light. Now, what's holding it back? People will come back in droves. Um, FOMO might kick in. Companies now can use it. You see, like, so I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at it that way. So, no, I would never play with XRP. That's not going to happen. Um, but they have this update here, the Zahal Teleport. We'll see how it works. We'll see. I don't think that interoperability is a problem for the XRPL. So, and I know somebody can debate that. I'm not here to debate. You can believe what you want to believe. But this is why I say what I say. L let me lay out my thoughts. XRPL doesn't need interoperability. It was made to be a network. That's why they had Ripple Net. All right. All the, if all the companies have the same infrastructures, right? And you could 
complain about their, oh, it's centralized. I don't know. That's up to you. I'm here to make some money. I'll let everybody else debate that. And I just want to count some, I just want to count capital at the end of the day. So capital gains. So if everyone's, all these banks are on the same network, where's the interoperability problem? You see, that's, and that's why they brought in hundreds and hundreds of banks so early on, um, which is, is, you know, it's interesting to, to think about actually, because either they're sitting on a lot of announcements, they brought a lot of new banks in, they're just not saying anything um, because they're waiting to have that aha day, like it's our day now. See, everybody doubted us. We're going to drop these announcements on your head, break your neck a little bit, make your, head, make your head snap forward and backward with these announcements, or they did it a long time ago and they've just been waiting. It's one of the two. Um, if you're going to compete with a system like Swift, you have to do a hell of a lot of work early on. So in Ripple, we all know has been very ambitious, have been very vocal about what they want to do and what they're going after, they haven't stopped. So they had to make some sort of progress. We haven't seen them take any any real losses, in my humble opinion, as far as progress towards uh, financial domination in the future when there's actual clarity for crypto. Uh, I mean, overall clarity for crypto. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Uh, but with all those transactions, and that's what I wanted to get to, my apologies. With all those transactions, remember, with the higher the, the transactions, the more XRP is burned as well. So now you have XRP and burn being... Be, my goodness, I'm over here fumbling over my words. XRP burned because of transactions. Then you have XRP being burned for people who want to participate in Zahal Network. You know, so like I said, I'm keeping my eye on it. We'll see how it all it all plays out. Then keep in mind, like I said, they they have um the native native smart contracts coming up, things like that. So you have that coming out. Then you have a uh, Flare Network. Uh. uh coming out with their smart contracts for XRP. That's going to be interesting. I don't care what anybody says. I'm very interested to see if Flare could pull this off. And once they do, how that's going to affect everything. Remember, they're having uh, uh, smart contracts on Flare for XRP, Bitcoin. This could, it could be a, if they could pull that off, it's going to be a game changer. So what I'm watching for is a huge indicator of how impactful it could be is when, the uh, those uh, F assets, the, the the testing of those F assets, the smart contracts, whatever comes out of the test net and goes to the test drive, test drive network, which is Songbird. When those come out and they hit Songbird, I'm watching closely to see uh, to the, the data that comes out on it. Is it working properly? Are the people satisfied with it? How hard does it hit? Are like, you know, how hard does it hit Songbird? And then once it goes through Songbird, uh, you know, then it, they'll go to a flare. But the smart contract aspect of the bank coins is going to be so important, both to XLM and XRP. And that's another thing. So I was reading that they have they may have may have. Of course, the future is not not guaranteed. It's not written, of course. Right. But that they're having they're going to possibly have smart contracts through flare for XLM at some point in the future like that. I love what they're doing. Just the idea. Once again, I have to see if they actually do what they're, they're they could pull it off. But that could be huge. And look, yes, you have the Soro band coming out. But listen, like I said, I always want multiple options. I want multiple ways to win. And it should be that that way in life. You should have multiple ways to make some capital, multiple way, uh, multiple means of security. Um, so, you know, have a plan A and a plan B pretty much. But this is going to get interesting, you know. Listen, you know, I have a lot of fun with crypto because there's always something new going on, always something new to learn. There's always a a, a new pathway to to research and look up, and you know, it keeps my mind active. I like to keep my mind active. It's the same reason why I'm now very, very uh, interested with AI. Not to mention, I've been using a lot of AI, but it's something where it's a mystery. It's something new to learn. It keeps my mind active. It's very interesting. It's always making progress. I like things that are moving, always moving forward, always forward, never backwards, always forward, never backwards. Nas said that, right? So now let's go here because um, we have a little bit of things happening with the stable coin environment is getting crazy right now. Um, and Charles, uh, Charles Hoskinson, is uh, voicing his opinion on certain things. Um, I think Charles Hoskinson is, is very brilliant. I think Cardano is going to do a great job in the future. I really do. Um, they definitely have made a, a better impression on me as of recent than they have <laughs> before the last few months. <laughs> but let's read this little tidbit here. This says, this says Cardano's Hoskinson 
voices USDC concerns as demand grows. And one thing I respect about Charles Hoskinson, he stands his ground. He doesn't back down. Uh, you know, you know, he's he can admit when he's wrong. That's not backing down. This is, you know, I made a mistake. I'm going to make that better. And I improve actually by recognizing the mistake and making myself better, you know, but he doesn't back down from the things he actually believes in here. I, res I respect that. He stands his ground. So now let's read this little tidbit here. It says the Cardano founder isn't keen on inviting centralization into the network by integrating asset backed stable coins, you know, and that's an interesting thing because let me tell you. Being in crypto for this little short while that I've been here, um, I've heard so many people talk about decentralization, decentralization. But then the same audiences will scream stable coins, stable coins. That's the that's centralization. Right. Um, it's been very interesting. Like, see, I keep it simple. I'm just here to make money. I'm just here to make money. That's it. Um, as far as dealing with the crypto, I keep it very, very basic. It says here calls for a fiat backed stable coin on Cardano have reached unprecedented levels with the community passionately requesting the integration of USDC into the network. You know, what's interesting. I, I read an article this morning, actually, where the listen, you have a huge part of the U.S. government that's against stable coins. We know that that's very clear. They made that very clear. There is one man. I can't remember his name, but you'll probably see the article. There is one man in the Fed that came out a couple days ago. He and he said that USDC, he's pro stable coins. That's very, a very different view than the rest of the Fed has. And he was saying how he believes USDC strengthens the, the dollar's reach and the effect of the dollar in the world. Now, if you extrapolate a little bit from, from that idea, if it strengthens the U.S. dollar, it strengthens the U.S. government, it strengthens the U.S. legacy financial system. That's the definition of centralization just right there. I think that's logical. But anyway, let's continue on here. It says uh, integration of USDC into the network. Members are highlighting several potential benefits of having a major stable coin and how it could transform the network's DeFi scene for the better. However, as demand grows for USDC, Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson Hoskinson's concerns have also begun to surface, particularly regarding centralization and the potential risk of surrendering too much power. He's absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. You see, Hoskinson is not like a lot of other utility coin um, leaders. He firmly believes in decentralization firmly. And, and, and it's not a it's not a facade. It's not a gimmick. He really, really believes in that. Um as opposed to other, you know, uh, uh, blockchains, like let's say, for instance, like Stellar, you know, and I love Stellar. And I believe in XLM, you know, uh, but they want to get close to the centralized powers. They want to get close to the United States government. They want to get close to the United Nations, WEF, the banks. So they have to embrace that aspect because those entities want nothing more than control. They want to have a little bit of 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 impact there and yeah usdc is definitely a part of that arm 100 percent. this is why circle was trying to get so close to the fed oh fed here hold our reserves fed and i think the fed denied them on that but they've been doing everything that they can to become a part of that system charles hoskinson and cardano are not like that at all i can say that honestly at all um it says here in a recent video titled quote uh, legacy is eating crypto. Then I told I told people I told they I told people they were taking over. The legacy system is taking over crypto. Get your money while you can. Not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But the time where retail controls uh, crypto, I think it's it's almost at an end. Really, to have that domination that retail used to have, no, it's, it's coming to an end. And um, this is why I was saying before about retail needs to focus on controlling your kingdom. Because all that infighting allowed the enemy to sneak right in the back door. All that infighting allowed them to take over little by little quietly. They focused. They got the they they ex, they they exacted their plan. But retail could have fought back much much more if they really wanted it. But distraction, greed, you know that always will be the downfall of a large portion of mankind. It's not everybody. Some of some people are very focused out there. But you know I'm just talking about the majority. It says here. 
In a recent video titled, Legacy is Eating Crypto, Charles Hoskinson expressed concerns about the growing demand for USDC, warning that it could invite centralization in, into Cardano, it will. Hoskinson began by asserting that asset-backed stablecoins were, uh, quote, problematic, unquote. Expanding on his view, Hoskinson noted that while stablecoins only re represented 10% of the crypto market cap, uh, USDT and USDC dominated on-chain volumes with a 70% transaction volume share think about that for a moment expressing his apprehension the crypto pundit highlighted the regulatory risk of asset-backed stable coins and there they are there are a lot of regulatory risk you hear how the banks talk about them stable coins are not stable every other week there's a new document released on stable coins not being stable i've only heard that one person from the fed in the last year say something positive about stable coins. And, 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 and people are finding that highly controversial within the government. It says, noting, they're, they're letting us know. They're literally saying that. <laughs> they're not, they don't agree with him. Noting they were regulated entities. This meant they were subject to laws and regulations that could affect holders if issuers were required to comply with local policies. With the USDC and USDT, Holders are, for the most part, subject to what the U.S. government says, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, what he's saying and the, the angle he's playing, it's like, when, then what is the point of DeFi? <laughs> What's the point of DeFi, right? It says, additionally, Hoskinson raised concerns about the potential divisiveness of asset-backed stablecoins in the event of, a, of blockchain forks, highlighting their influence over network decisions. Cardano founder added that algorithmic stablecoins were not subject to these issues. Yeah, but algorithmic stablecoins seem to be more problematic than the, the asset back ones. Right. You know, um, from what I've read, I could be wrong and you could disagree with that. I'm not here to convince you of anything. I'm just here to report the news and what I found. So then he goes in to defend algorithmic stablecoins. But we're going to skip that little part so we can get to a little bit more news today. I'm going to give you more news today. All right. So. Solana, muy linda, beautiful, beautiful Solana. Expert hints on Solana's $140 potential as Cardano and New. Why do they always try to in, in, involve something else? Cardano, I respect. Keep it. It says as Cardano and new meme coin rise, they always try to slide something in there. So it's in your mind like they're trying to introduce this. It's like, why? What? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I question that. Like, are you trying to to promote this meme coin? Like you're trying to get us to buy this meme coin or something like that because you're putting it right next to heavy hitters like Solana and Cardano. You see what I'm saying? So I, like, I just don't like that. If you're going to write about Solana, just write about Solana, write about Cardano. That's how I feel about that. You know, but I don't want to hear about any meme coins. Just personally, personally, I don't want to hear about any meme coins. I'm not here to throw my money away and take extreme risk. I'm going to take a little risk here and there. Everything is risky, but that's extreme risk. I'm not here to do that. No, I, I don't play those kind of games. Anyway, Solana, it says here, the cryptocurrency market continues to be dynamic with digital assets like Solana, Cardano and Rebel Satoshi garnering attention from investors worldwide. In this article, we delve into the potential for Solana to reach $140 expert opinions on key triggers. It says Solana's potential to surge to $140. Solana, renowned for its lightning fast transactions and scalability, is also beloved by a lot of these big institutions. I keep that in mind. That's one of the biggest drivers. So, and it gets a lot of good, good publicity, even despite like whatever problem they just recently had, which seemed to be very minor. Everybody's had a little bit of problems. So let's get that on out the way. We're still in the nascent phase. No big deal. They still, Solana still continues to be loved. And I tell you what, I respect it. And I completely enjoy Solana. And I believe in Solana. I do. It says has made significant strides with this current price hovering around one hundred and eleven dollars. We're still up majorly. You know, I say we, but I really mean I, I right. But I speak with the we quite often, um, not financial advice. But but Solana is up majorly from where we got in. Right. Of course, there's been some profit taking, but nothing, nothing too major. It says experts speculate whether Sol could soar to one hundred and forty dollars in the near future. I say it's possible. Guaranteed? No. Possible? Yes. Highly possible? Yes. 
The cryptocurrency's recent performance showcases a promising trajectory with Seoul trading at $111 and boasting a market cap of $49.2 billion as it inches toward its yearly highs. Traders' increasing confidence in Seoul signals a potential bull run aiming to establish a new all-time high in 2024. So now, a little bit more Solana news because they've been on fire lately at that company. They're doing a good job over there. In my humble opinion. So this next article is titled Solana Mobile Processed Over $20 Million in Payments Using USDC with No Processing Fees. It says Solana, uh, Solana Mobile, the Solana Lab subsidiary tasked with designing and producing Chapter 2, the upcoming Solana phone, received over $20 million in USDC payments without incurring processing fees during the phone's pre-order process. Anatoly Yakovenko, a co-founder of Solana Labs, explained this uh, was possible using Shopify, which offers different plugins for building an e-store and processing cryptocurrency payments directly with Solana Pay. We might be talking about Shopify soon because on one of my channels here, I'm going to start covering uh, some other things. We're going to start covering some other things. We're going to get to the money in a bunch of different ways. Don't worry about it. I'm telling you. Just like on the other channel, we're covering AI. You use that AI, you can get to the money much easier. I'm telling you. Use these opportunities while they exist. So now let's move on here. And the Bitcoiners are going to try to pull something off while everybody is, is broke, desperate. <laughs> you know, they need the money. And so profit taking is going to be heavy. That's why I say that the people don't care about anything. They got to make that money, dinero. They got to make the dinero. So they're going to sell. So I want to see how this works out. This article is titled Don't Sell to Larry. Larry Fink, BlackRock, Bitcoiners lampoon BlackRock as fund giants holding surpassed six billion dollars so they're telling people hey don't sell your bitcoin the bitcoin halving is coming up and that's easy to say until you look at the economics see i keep up with the economics i think of myself as sort of an ec economist i just don't cover you know overall economic news anymore on the other channel like i used to but the people can't afford apartments they're barely affording food, right? This is what they're saying. I'm reading articles every day about this. They're barely affording food. They're getting their cars repossessed at all-time highs. Uh, their children are coming back home to live with them. All of these bad things going on. They're having a hard time finding jobs, even though they claim the government claims there's so many jobs, but the, the people are saying that they, they're having a hard time finding jobs. They're going to dozens, if not hundreds of interviews. Go look that up. And they're not getting anything. So you mean to tell me you believe that the people are not going to sell? That's why when I'm... When um, I think about or I hear anybody talking about like the bank coins or anything and they're like, you know, it's been a long road. It's getting hard and stuff like that. It's like, look, you got to make the best decisions for you. If you feel like you got to sell and it's not financial advice, you may have to do that. You got to do what's best for you. Nobody knows what your family's going through, what you're going through, that capital sitting there and it's being detrimental to your life. I wouldn't want anything to be detrimental to someone's life. They're going to have they're going to have to sell so they can live. It's simple as that. And I think that's a big part of what's going on now that a lot of people are not taking into account. They're not looking at the the what the rest of the people in the United States and the world are going through. And although some people, a good amount of them may be doing well, a huge swath of the regular population is not doing well. They're going to sell. They're going to buy. They're going to sell. They're only holding for a short time to make a little bit of gains. Um, I was reading an article the other day. Somebody had purchased some sort of asset. And they were like, they purchased it. It went up a little bit. They sold it to buy groceries. You get what I'm saying? That's what's going on. So yeah, you sure. It's easy to say, don't sell, don't sell. It's like times are getting real, real hard. Affordability of living is terrible. Wage growth has gone, has plummeted, even though inflation in a lot of different ways and data and numbers do lie because they tell you the story of whoever controls the numbers and who's going to verify it beyond them since they're supposed to be the authority. But Inflation in a lot of ways that are not taken into account when they put out that CPI and all that has been just skyrocketing. It's terrible. So, sure, it's easy to tell people not to sell, but that's why I say people have to make their own decisions. You know, they're going to sell. <laughs> they're going to sell. So, but we'll see. We shall see. And, and once again, that cannibalization where the, 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 the crypto community has just fought each other tooth and nail. Mm -mm. People want out. It's not just holding it, the stress of it. A lot of people were involved in a lot of uh, deeply in these communities that are just at war now. It's just constant stress being involved sometimes with crypto. I, this is what I'm hearing. 
Um, and so it's it's not just having hell for a long time. It's the stress of it all, too. They just want to ha have that relief. Sell, take their capital and go. You know, so it's going to be interesting times coming up for crypto. Um, I think overall it's going to be very good for those who know how to navigate these uh, these uh, bloody shark waters that are coming up. And, um, you know, we'll see how it works out. It says don't sell <laughs> 124 days left to the halving. Don't sell your Bitcoin to Larry Fink. I mean, who are they going to let control them? You or, or Fink? I mean, I mean, if they let's say they don't sell and then, and then Bitcoin, Bitcoin uh, plummets in price again. And that that could definitely happen. Saying It's a slippery slope, but I get it. Some people just don't care. You know, I'm different. I'm different. You know, um, I just want to report the news and, and, you know, I have some crypto. I hope that crypto goes up. I hope crypto pops off and it makes lots of millionaires. But that's separate from just reporting the news. But, you know, people's lives are on the line. I just I just hope people know that people's lives are on the line. You know, I don't know. I think like that. So anyway, we had a few more articles. I may just put those in the members only uh, members only video. These last ones. OK, so. Now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, everybody, let's get to the money.